What's going on YouTube? Hope you guys are having a wonderful Thursday. It's your homie, Big Daddy Gibbs, here at BDG Comics, and today I'm bringing you my hype pick of the week review, and this is the series where I take my most anticipated book from New Comic Book Day, and I review it. Now today, I'm reviewing my most anticipated book of March 2nd, 2022's New Comic Book Day, and that pick is Dark Knights of Steel, issue number 5 out of 12. Uh, this book is produced by DC Comics, and it's written by Tom Taylor with art from Yasmin Putri. Now, what I'm going to do in this video today is the first half or so, I'm going to just kind of give you my opinion and tell you what I'm thinking of this issue as well as the run as a whole now that we have this issue. And the second half of the video, I'm kind of going to go more into the pages of the book and give you some spoilers as well as more thoughts about uh, where we're headed and kind of just break down the plot and we're going to talk about it a little bit all right so first of all uh, this is the cover a which is beautiful by the way i love the characterization here of of poison ivy her facial expression fantastic i love the way her hair just kind of wraps down into and almost blends in perfectly with uh harley quinn's little jester hat uh, Harley Quinn's like shocked face and her eyes just glowing really pretty cover but I did not pick up cover a I picked up the cover B from Joshua Middleton let me show you that real quick now Joshua Middleton has been doing one of these cardstock variant covers for every single issue of this run so far and all five of them are absolutely gorgeous. I'm really excited to see what's in store for the rest of them. All right, so my opinions on this issue so far. I really dug it. Uh, it's probably the best issue of this run so far, in my opinion. Tom Taylor is an absolute wizard in this issue and just is crafting this awesome tale. Now, it is a return back to the normal plot progression of the story in issue four, Yasmin Putri wasn't doing the art and they kind of spun off and did a little backstory expositionary kind of issue. Um, now it was still really good, but it was probably the worst issue of the series, but that's not saying much because this series has been fantastic. Um, and like I said, issue five is definitely no different there. Now, if I was going to go and give this issue a score, I'd probably give it like an eight or an 8.5 out of 10. Like I said, it's been fantastic. And this issue was no exception. It was incredible. And while not perfect, I'm going to struggle to find something to beat it at least this week, I think. Um, I know a lot of you guys have some other picks up there that you're saying are uh, definitely in contention, if not just outright beating it. Uh, but a couple of those series I'm kind of down on. Nod to you. Nice house on the lake. I'm also interested in Tom Taylor's other work, uh, Dark Ages for Marvel. Um, I know it's kind of like a Elseworlds tale, medieval kind of thing going on for Marvel. Uh, now, I think they're five or six issues in as well, uh, but I haven't read anything. And I'm curious, let me know in the comments below if I should read it and how you feel about it compared to Dark Knights of Steel. So far, I uh, have heard mostly average or even negative things about the series, so I'm not sure if I want to dive in. I got plenty of books to read, so I'm definitely not trying to waste my time. But, but yeah, I, I'm a little interested, especially after getting this far into this one. One of the biggest compliments I think Tom Taylor deserves in this uh, issue particular is his ability to interweave and craft these... These, these nuts... <laughs> <laughs> just outrageous twists and turns that seem like they would be so like game changing and meta defining and breaking. Uh, but he does it in this way that's it makes it smooth and it's not super jarring like it might be um, otherwise. There's just some really cool uh, character development and uh, lore development. Like this book seems like it could have a lot of extra lore behind 
past 12 issues. Now, I cannot believe that we are actually almost halfway done with this little mini series because there is still so much to tell. I have a feeling that either we're going to be left hanging with a big old cliffhanger or we're not really going to be sure of the ending. Either that or issues 6 through 12 are just going to be this insane wild ride uh, where all these kingdoms come together. Maybe there's a war. Uh, I don't know, but um, I can tell you that there is definitely a lot of story left to tell. Um, mostly in issues 1 through 5 have been, most of the plot has been set up. Um, there's been some plot progression, of course, but it seems like every issue is kind of expanding the world and setting up more, more so than answering questions and progressing the plot, which there is some of that in just about every issue so far, but I had to mention that six, I have a feeling six through 12 are just going to be absolutely buck wild. And I am personally excited for that ride. All right, now we're going to get into the spoiler heavy section of this video. So just be warned. Uh, now is the time. If you do not wish to be spoiled to click on that back arrow, watch one of my previous videos or go watch another comic book YouTubers videos, or if you're smart, you'll uh, take some time out and you'll read your comic books. All right, so you've been warned. Uh, comment down below and let me know that this is kind of where you jumped off if you did, because uh, you didn't want to be spoiled. Make sure you leave a like and click that subscribe button and uh, I'll catch you around. So like I said, this is the cover A. And then we open this issue up and the introduction is a subtitle from Tom Taylor where he has titled this issue Lost Souls. And we start out in the kingdom, inside of the kingdom of El, inside the castle. And uh, Zala has returned home and Cal is greeting her. Cal basically confronts her and says, you know, when did you find out? Where have you been? And uh, she basically says, hey, uh, I was hunting down the, sus the suspect who assassinated our father. He is not too happy about that. He's upset that she went on her own. But, I mean, I can't blame her, really. Can you? Uh, her father was assassinated. She wants to bring justice. And uh, he basically says, justice will be done. Don't worry. And they share this, like, loving sibling embrace where they're, you know, mournful, of course, of their father. And now a good portion of this issue is going to take place in Hob Forest, where uh, Harley Quinn who is a jester, yet also diplomat of the Kingdom of El. She's uh, seeking out, um, she's seeking out Poison Ivy. Now she has found Poison Ivy, and they kind of shared this little conversation where Harley is trying to uh, recruit her to basically be the Kingdom of El's first line of defense. Uh, Poison Ivy basically says she's not interested in any of that, um, but she is very romantically interested in Harley and wants her to stay. Now, enter Wonder Woman. She uh, was flying over on her way to Kingdom of El. And then Poison Ivy kind of yanked her from the sky with vines wrapped around her legs and kind of ensnared her and pulled her down into the forest. And they had this uh, conversation, this dialogue where Poison Ivy is inquisitive and wonders why Wonder Woman is headed to the Kingdom of El. And Wonder Woman says because of Zala, uh, she's being accused of something that could seriously bring war to the realm and uh, divide the kingdoms. Uh, I really love the art on this page. The facial expressions, especially of Wonder Woman and Poison Ivy, where you have this angry kind of uh, focused and scornful almost wonder woman and then you have this like almost smug mischievous poison ivy like i have said and will continue to say yasmin putri is amazing so zala and kal el have overheard all the commotion and stuff in the forest and they show up and interestingly zala's like what have i been accused of and that leads to wonder woman and zala having this private conversation interestingly uh, Zala really doesn't seem to know what she did uh, she has this very confused face of bewilderment uh, and she says if I'd murdered a child I'd think I, I think I'd remember 
So what's going on here is was she just blinded by her rage and her vengeance? Um, and she just doesn't know what she, she truly doesn't know what she did or is something more nefarious going on. And I'm not going to say too much about this. We have a little Nightwing cameo. Uh, and now here we get to the real meat of the story where there was this fallen star that supposedly has come from Krypton and this little shard of kryptonite is affecting Bruce and Cal is confused and he doesn't understand why it's affecting Bruce. And then finally the beans are spilt and Bruce tells Cal that, yeah, they're half brothers. Jor-El was both of their fathers and uh, he basically waited to tell Cal because he didn't want to bring shame to his father and he didn't want to have that kind of embarrassment kind of lingering around the kingdom. And then uh, Superman puts that shard of kryptonite right through Batman's chest. And Cal flies Batman up into the sky with that shard of kryptonite just puncturing his chest. And then he just tosses him down. Like fast pitch, just slams him into the ground. This, uh, this little scene reminds me a lot of Dragon Ball Z. Where they're just like slamming each other into the terrain. And then you got this little farm family kind of shows up. And they're like, what fell from the sky? And then they come up to the crater and see Batman laying there. And they recognize him instantly. And they, because they're uh, basically peasants of the kingdom of El. The farmer sees him. And he said, it's the Batman. Then they kind of had this little debate on whether or not they should help him out. Or what they should do. They decide to take him to the palace, and then Bruce freaks out. He's like, no, don't take me to the palace, because, well, let's be honest. Bruce knows what's going to happen if he goes to the palace, especially in this condition. He is uh, probably going to get the guillotine or something. You see Bruce, or you see the farmer rip the shard of kryptonite out of Bruce's chest, and uh, almost in a man of steel fashion, he's like about to shoot some lasers out of his eyes. All right, and uh, yeah, what a ending page we got here to conclude this issue and to set us up for the future with issue six. We got uh, the farmer and his wife seem to be ferrying uh, Bruce Wayne out to their, their cottage or their farm. And uh, yeah, it turns out that the farmer is Jonathan Kent and the farmer's wife is Martha Kent, which is really interesting. And it looks like in the in this series, Bruce Wayne is going to be the adopted son of the Kent family. This is kind of what I was talking about when I said that there was a smoothly written crazy turn, right? A crazy twist. And uh, that's pretty much the issue. Uh, so for issue six, I'm really curious to see what what progresses with especially the Amazonians. I really want to know... Um, what is going on with them and their accusation of Zala. And also, especially, I want to know uh, what's going on in Zala's brain. Uh, is she not well? Um, is she sick? Like, is she just forget because she was blinded by her vengeance? All right, now I'm going to throw a little prediction your way. The green man uh, is responsible for the death of Black Lightning's son. I don't think that it was actually Zala. I think it was the green man or one of, you know, another villain or one of his henchmen or something like that, uh, that kind of impersonated Zala and is trying to fool everybody and bring the kingdoms to war. That's just kind of what I'm thinking and how I'm feeling. Uh, I think, like I said earlier, is something more nefarious going on. That's kind of what I was hinting at and what I think is going to be you know, the interesting turn of events in the future. So if you read Dark Knights of Steel, uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of the, of this issue and uh, maybe what you think, you know, is going to happen in the future. I'm really curious to know your opinion and maybe get some uh, hot takes or some predictions out and uh, maybe we'll talk about it in the future. Uh, so that's pretty much it for me. I'm Big Daddy Gibbs. This is BDG Comics, and uh, like and subscribe for more content. Until next time. Let's go.